All right, in this video, we're going to be walking through how to upgrade a laptop for video editing. Specifically, I want to be upgrading the NVMe drive on the Asus ProArt P16. Now, I'm going to start by undoing the screws on the back side of the laptop here. And uh, this will take me a minute. So I'm going to talk through a few elements of the device. Now, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you're getting the correct NVMe drive. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting the right size as well as the correct generation. So for instance, in this laptop that I am taking apart right now, the Asus ProArt P16, it's running off of Gen 4. But you want to check if your laptop is Gen 5 or Gen 4, because obviously they're not cross compatible. So we want to make sure that we are compatible with the right drive. Now there's also price points and speeds, and I'm gonna show you a little chart later in the video to help you choose the right drive for your device, your price point, et cetera. Uh, actually, my good friend over at TechNotice uh, put together a whole chart of the best drives and price points and performance. Now one chart that I wanna show you really quickly uh, has to do with the performance increases that you could see by adding a better performance-oriented drive. So right here, I have the export time for the Asus ProArt P16, two minutes and 29 seconds. That is off the boot drive that comes with the laptop. When I switch out, well, excuse me, I'm not gonna switch out. When I add an additional M.2 drive to this laptop, we are going to see if we're gonna have some performance increases for this device. Now, time will tell. I don't know if we're gonna see any performance increases for that export time, but that will be the main uh, uh, lever that will be pulled if we see increase in performance. We're not going to see better playback or anything like that. We're going to see an increase in export time out of Premiere Pro. Now, for the P16 specifically, there's these little feet, little rubber things at the bottom you have to take out, and they actually kind of tear. So, word to the wise, if you're going to be upgrading the P16, just you're unfortunately going to have to get over the fact that you're going to tear these little feet. Those are hiding two more screws that you have to take out on your device got to fade over so there's the feet so these two more screws have to come out before the bottom cover will come off and they're kind of challenging to get out of that that compartment there all right so we're gonna get these last screws out and then we're gonna be on to getting this laptop bottom cover taken off and then moving on with the upgrade of this laptop. This video is brought to you by the Asus ProArt P16, the flagship creator laptop from Asus that provides on-the-go workstation performance within a beautiful and durable military-tested all-aluminum chassis, outfitted with a pen-compatible 4K OLED corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs four pounds and is just over a half an inch thick, capable of all-day battery life for productivity tasks, and fitted with the Asus dial to streamline your workflow providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, up to 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 4060 or 4070, this device is a powerhouse for architecture and 3D modeling work. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg when looking at what the Asus ProArt P16 has to offer. Check out my full review content within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or in the description below. Thank you so much to Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Now, if you're curious about the drive that I will be using, I'm going to be upgrading this laptop to the Solidime P44 Pro. This was the best that I could find at the price I wanted to spend in the generation I needed. So this is a PCIe 4.0, it's a Gen 4, NVMe M.2 SSD. So that is the drive I will be using. I'll put links in the description below with this drive if you wanna check it out, purchase it, check the price, whatever it might be. And I'll also put a few more uh, drives in the description below uh, for like different budgets. And again, I'm gonna walk you through how to choose the right drive or not even how to, but just some options in the performance indications. So you can be like, okay, quick reference, that's got good performance, that fits my budget. I'm going to go for that one. And again, that will be thanks to Tech Notice. If you never watched Tech Notice's channel, he is incredible, a very good friend of mine. And um, so shout out to him for compiling that list. All right, let's go ahead and pull the bottom cover off of this device. And this one actually pulls off very easily, which I thoroughly enjoy. Nothing I hate more than a bottom cover that is a pain in the butt to take off, especially when you're trying to upgrade the device in the video. 
you want that bottom cover to come off very easily. Okay, now as we're looking at the device here, you can see that we have our unoccupied, or our occupied, and our unoccupied, whoa, mess, messing with me here. Okay, so we have our occupied and our unoccupied drive. Under here is actually the uh, just the Wi-Fi card. Um, so there's the unoccupied, and that is where we are going to be putting our drive, right in that slot there. So that's where we'll load it up, and that will be the new position of the P44 Solidime drive. Let's fade back over here, and let's go ahead and get this out of the box. So thin. I think that's the amazing thing about these drives is that they are so insanely thin. Just look at that. That's beautiful. So there's the Solidime drive. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in here. Now i got to switch bits real quick. And then we're going to go ahead, and once we get this thing fired up, we're going to go ahead and load over the footage from the main drive to the, goodness me, to the uh, new drive and see what kind of performance we can get out of this. If I can get this standoff screw out of the, there we go, got it. That was crazy. It was so snug in there. All right. So putting the drive in place, dropping it down, going to put the screw on the magnetize, and then we'll drop that back on top there. Okay, nice and snug, but not too tight like it was before, my goodness. And now we're going to go ahead, get our tr trash out of the way, nice clean desk area, and let's go ahead and get the bottom cover put back on and get this thing fired back up so that we can start testing the performance to see if we have improved performance for this device. And at that point, we're also gonna talk through the chart and choosing the right device. So swapping back over the screwdriver. And my question is to you in the comment section right now, what drive are you currently looking at? And what laptop are you looking to upgrade? Or are you watching this video uh, before you've made a purchase? Are you thinking about purchasing a laptop and you want to know like what laptops are upgradable, what laptops are not? Like what makes you want to know about upgrading your laptop? If you have an additional M.2 slot like the P16, it makes it really easy to upgrade your laptop. Where it becomes difficult is when you end up needing to upgrade a laptop that does not have a uh, unoccupied uh, M.2 slot. You want to find one with two. That's my recommendation for most people, especially if you're new at working on laptops. You don't want to pursue a laptop with a M.2 drive that is a singular M.2 drive. What happens is you end up needing to reinstall the boot drive and it just gets very complicated. I am considering making a video on that, but even for me, I, I just, it makes me wary because I am technically savvy from a hardware standpoint, but as soon as things get a little bit crazy from a software standpoint in like understanding how to reset the BIOS and make the drive discoverable, I have been stumped more times than I wish to uh, admit in regards to uh, getting a laptop fully set up. So I often try and aim for laptops that have secondary M.2 slots where you don't need to upgrade the, the actual boot drive. I'm missing a screw. There it is. Last screw going in. Turn this laptop over, get it fired up, and then we are going to check the performance that relates to this new drive. We got the laptop firing up. And at this point, now I'm gonna walk you through um, the drive. What drive should you purchase? Um, as we're looking at the SSD specs, here's something I wanna point out. So as you can see, this is all of the SSDs or a good portion of them that my buddy over at Tech Notice has gone ahead and tested. Now this is a variety of both Gen 5 and Gen 4. Now you can see a very large jump in performance right around here on the chart. And that's where we're jumping from Gen 4 to Gen 5. 
Now, as you can see, I went ahead and chose the Solidine P44 right here. But let's say you want to uh, check out how much the Lexar uh, might cost. All right, so here's the two we have. We have the Solidime at 194 and we have the Lexar at 161 However, the retail price on the Lexar was 249 Now, let's jump back over to those benchmarks real quick, and you can see that they're neck and neck. Basically, all of these Gen 4 are really great performance. Another great one is the Samsung 990 Evo Plus. If you want to go ahead and buy this, it is Gen 4 4x4, but it's also Gen 5x2. So you can still get this drive, but you're not going to get the full performance of the drive. You're going to get Gen 4 speeds. But that is good to know. That's something I actually hadn't even put in my head uh, until recently. So if you want to go ahead and get Gen 5 drive, it's both Gen 4 and Gen 5 compatible. And this one's 139 So, so far, we're looking at um, the... Samsung 990 Evo Plus as the best deal right now. And then the last one we'll look at is going to be the Crucio for 134 So if you're looking for the best deal, you want to check out either the Samsung or the Crucial. I got the Solidime. I thought it had really high promise with the read and write speeds um, being just around 7,000. But you can see both the Crucial and the Samsung are up there as well. Um, just based on the chart, though, I picked the top of the chart, and I had talked to Lori a couple of times about this, and he said that he really, really liked the Solidime. And so that's where I leaned into the Solidime and went ahead and pulled the trigger on that one specifically. Okay, so now we're inside of disk management, and we're trying to get this disk to show up so we can go ahead and utilize it. All right, so I'm here in disk management, and I just basically go ahead... And I allow it to app, allow it to allocate space on the drive. And let's check if that worked. I allowed it to create a partition. Let's go click over. Still not there. Okay, so now we need to go ahead. It says it's unallocated. So we need to right click on the drive. New simple volume. Next. Next. Allow the driver to be set as D, that's fine. Finish. And now that it format the drive, and now it'll be named new volume. So you come into disk management, find the new drive, right click, create new simple volume, and there you go. Your new volume is accessible. Now what we want to do is go ahead and pull over our video editing test project folder so we can test the export time for the new project. So that'll copy over really quickly. And then we will be able to test to see if we can get a better export than the 2 minutes and 29 seconds that was able to accomplish earlier. All right, so we have the new volume opened up. And we're going to go ahead and open the raw resolutions and just do a simple export time to see if we can beat the previous 2 minutes. And I believe it was 29 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. So 2 minutes and 29 seconds is the export time to beat. So we're exporting, so we have the project open on the new Solidime drive, and we're exporting to the new Solidime drive. And we have to go ahead and switch the location it's saving to, just so we don't accidentally save somewhere else. I'm going to go into the video and test project, I'm going to save it there, and let's go ahead and export. All right, we'll see if we can beat that export time of 2 minutes and 29 seconds. All right, 51 seconds. And we have a minute and five seconds left on the timer. This thing is really pumping, though. You can hear the fans. The fans are going hot on performance mode with this device right now. Okay, three seconds left. It usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds after, though, to finish up. So we're at two minutes. Here's the countdown. Can it beat the two minutes and 29 seconds from the boot drive? This is a new Solidime, 7,800 megabytes per second, and it is so far getting too close for comfort. Oh, no. Can it do it? Nope, it can't. It can't do it. It's like the Chiefs and the Eagles last night. They just couldn't pull it off.
<laughs> nope, it actually ended up being slower. Oh my word. So, in this regard, the boot drive that the computer shipped with was faster than the new Solidime that I put into place. Two minutes and 42 seconds, because it took me a second there to grab the... Um, the stop button. Now, one thing I needed to check that I didn't check previously, but since the fans were running so hot, it makes me think that, um, yeah, it was already on high performance mode. So if you swap the drive, according to my experience, we're not seeing any improved performance for the export time. The drive that the ProArt comes with is really fast, which is actually great news for anybody purchasing the ProArt P16. Well, this was a video that I really enjoyed making. And again, if you want to check out the devices that I recommend in the links in the description below. Head down, click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you optimize your computer or with your buying decision. And I'll see you guys here in the next one.